Greetings, people of the internet. This is Scott with CircWorks. Did Marvel Comics rip off this guy, Spider-Man, from costume manufacturer Ben Cooper? I'm going to talk about that, and I'm going to do my own interpretation based on a costume that might be the original influence for Marvel Comics Spider-Man. Let's check it out. So, who really created Spider-Man? Uh, Long-time comic book fans are probably familiar with the argument uh, between Jack Kirby and Steve Ditko as far as who was the inspiration for Spider-Man. And I think what most people would agree now is that even though Jack Kirby was originally involved in, in uh, creating Spider-Man, um, it was later turned over to Steve Ditko, and it was Steve Ditko and Stan Lee that kind of created the character that we see now as far as the costume. I've seen some of the Jack Kirby costumes for Spider-Man, and they're a far cry from what we see now. But recently I saw a Facebook post. I think it was my brother who shared it. And the caption was, Did a Brooklyn costume shop create Spider-Man eight years previous to Marvel? And the answer to that is pretty much yes. Now, of course, there's more to creating a comic book character than just the costume, but when you read this article, and I'm going to post a link to, not necessarily the Facebook article, but the original article that's a little more detailed. I did some more research and everything, and it's, uh, it, it's, it's some pretty incredible evidence to the fact that, that Spider-Man, I mean, this... This costume design that existed back in the 50s before Spider-Man uh, debuted, um, it's almost, it's very difficult to say that, that the Spider-Man costume couldn't have been inspired by this. And there's another other factors that both like New York Company, like I said, uh, um, Ben Cooper, which is the costume company I'll talk a little more about, but they... They're a Brooklyn, they, like I said, they're a Brooklyn-based co uh, costume company. Marvel is, you know, Marvel is in New York. It's a New York company, um, and I guess from what I, from my understanding, of the article, um, Steve Ditko kind of walked to work to Marvel, and this costume shop was on the way and everything, and and you know, there's ads and everything else. But when you when you look at the picture, it's it's you know, it's hard to say, you know, and as a creator myself, sometimes you're inspired by things you don't even remember or whatever so you don't know and I'm not saying you know it's like a total ripoff because like I said because there's there's more to just the costume and the costumes they are different but they're I, I would say there's almost more similarities than differences between the costumes so and as you can see by my drawing right now what I'm what I'm doing is I'm taking uh, the Ben Cooper costume uh, and actually there are a few different versions of it so I'm combining a couple different versions and then adding some just updating and adding some old some of my own costume you know designs and interpretations of what what it would have looked like if they would have used that as a springboard for the actual costume and a lot of it has to do with the color and everything but as you can see um it it looks pretty similar to spider-man um the marvel spider-man so I'll talk a little bit more about Ben Cooper costumes. If you're, I was going to say if we were a child of the 70s or 80s, but that's not even really true because the, they've been around, uh, Ben Cooper was around since I think maybe, maybe even the 30s, but, um, or maybe it wasn't Ben, it was another costume company, was, I think it was either owned by Ben Cooper's father or whatever, or, or somehow Ben Cooper uh, took over the costume company and then and branded it as, as his name and everything. And But, uh, if if you're familiar with the the old costumes, sometimes they came in a box, sometimes they came on like a, a hanger. But they were these really chintzy plastic masks with a little rubber band that would snap and break and slap you in the face. And then they had these like almost like these plastic tarps that almost looked like garbage bags that you would kind of wear. And uh, the designs were really really not that great, really not that true to whatever licensed character they were based on, like. So, for instance, if you were a stormtrooper, you might have the stormtrooper mask, but instead of the instead of the costume looking like a stormtrooper costume, it might have a picture of a stormtrooper on it that said stormtrooper. So it was like I was I was kind of fortunate. I think I had my first costume ever was a Ben Cooper uh, Snoopy costume, and I vaguely remember, I was just very 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 little. Um, but later, my parents 
you know, I, I was kind of fortunate that my parents started making some really cool costumes for me, and um, I've talked about that probably ad nauseum on other other you know shows and things like that. But but yeah, so they would make costumes, and I'd go to costume you know contests, and we'd win. This is way before co a cosplay, but I'd win like prizes and things, and won a bike one year, which is really cool. So. So I was always, and I think most people are like that. They're kind of, you know, they look at the costumes and like these are really lame and cheesy and stuff. But in a way, you know, and they were. They were really a lot of the designs are really poor, um, but but they're also beloved. I think just from nostalgia because these were that was what the costumes were. And and looking back at them, I mean, I was like especially see them in the in the box and everything like that. I mean, it's it, it is really cool and it, it's it's just kind of a neat piece of nostalgia and it's a they're big collector's item because usually you know you wear your, co your costume and it gets like I said they weren't very well made so you know when they first debuted they were selling for like a couple bucks or whatever um, but anyway so so Ben Cooper costumes created this design for what they called a spider what they called spider-man and the mask it's even <laughs> and this is again to illustrate my point from earlier it was spider-man's mask but right on his forehead it says spider-man and it's got the the eye holes cut out, and it's even got a, like a nose hole cut out, which kind of looks ridiculous. But I'm sure that was some sort of it was probably a safety thing, because that particular that was must have been before they started doing the plastic mask, because it was more like a, a fabric type thing. Um, but when you look at it, the webbing on it, kind of like what you can see from from the drawing that I'm doing, the webbing, the way it the way it's you know comes over the face, and the way it's displayed over the face is really very 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 similar to you know to the spider-man costume of course their version was was yellow and black as opposed to red and red and uh blue but um but yeah a, a, a lot of similarities so it's it, like i said i mean you can be the judge like i said i'll post the i'll post the pictures but but i just thought it would be cool to do my own version and uh to see what it would look like and i don't i don't i wouldn't say it's better than, <laughs> than the actual one they went with but i thought it was kind of a cool experiment um but yeah so there's a lot just a, a lot of interesting thing and i really would encourage you to read read the article and everything um because when it, it's kind of it's kind of weird that when spider-man debuted and of course they when marvel published it they they must have trademarked the name and 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 I guess the Ben Cooper costume wasn't trademarked or whatever but but instead of fighting it they I think they had previous success with other licensed characters so I thought that they said well maybe we can make more money if we just license this character and um, and it's kind of and let the comic book drive the sales because before the costume probably wasn't selling very well or whatever and even when spider-man first came out it wasn't like an instant success it took a while you know it needed to get some footing before spider-man really got popular and so they they really only had i think they had maybe superman and maybe maybe batman possibly wonder woman at the time and then they they licensed the mar or the spider-man and really wasn't selling until the the Bill Dozier uh, Batman the 66 Batman with Burt Burt Ward and Adam Adam West um came out or Adam West and Burt Ward I guess <laughs> um but once that hit like superhero you know just became a big thing and then then the costume were selling and then Spider-Man started selling but going back to what I was saying as far as the way Ben Cooper would do their costumes even when they even when they first put out the Marvel version of the Spider-Man costume, it still was very like off model. It didn't. I mean, it, it it looked similar, but it still it was red, blue, and then for whatever reason they held on to that yellow and they put the they still kept the yellow in. So it it didn't look like Spider-Man in the comics. So I but it was still you know with Spider-Man. So uh, and that was the way with a lot of those costumes. Just really really bizarre, but cool to cool to look at when you're doing that. So. Um, just to, again, turn your attention back to the drawing. Now I'm doing something a little different. Um, I decided I was going to do this one digitally after I, I inked it tr and penciled it and inked it traditionally, but decided that I was going to color it uh, digitally just to make it look more like a comic book. So I uh, I finally did download a copy of Open. I think it's called Open Broadcast, uh, which is a screen sharing program, and it seemed to work pretty well. Um, so I'm happy about that and I'll probably be doing some more digital stuff and I just got uh, Manga Studio 
EX or Clip Studio Paint, same thing. Um, so I'm going to practice stuff with that, and then hopefully we'll see some more digital stuff. But still going to do a lot of traditional work and everything. But um, yeah, we're coming, as you can see, we're coming close to the end of the drawing. But if you are interested in learning more about, you know, Ben Cooper or... Uh, or you know the Spider-Man. I'm going to put a link to that. Um, so very interesting thing. Also, uh, Ben Cooper originally owned the copyright or the trademark for the word superheroes, which is now jointly owned by Marvel and DC. So I don't know when that whole thing. Maybe it's when they went out of business or whatever. But uh, yeah, just some really fascinating tidbits and knowledge and things like that that uh, you should check out. But uh, yeah, uh, I'm going to wrap it up. And until then, I'll see you next Friday. Be sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Let me know what you think. And that is all. Thank you.